There's been a lot of suspicion about whether Russia helped Syria carry out last week's chemical attack on civilians. Today, the AP is reporting Russia did know in advance about the attack, citing a senior U.S. official as its source, but Fox News has not been able to confirm. Meanwhile, Russia and Iran issued a joint statement today to threaten, US, uh, threaten us, the U.S., if we strike again. They say the United States crossed red lines by attacking Syria. From now on, we will respond to anyone, including America, if it attacks Syria and crosses the red lines, without taking into consideration any reaction and consequences. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson heads to Moscow tomorrow amid these escalating tensions. Can he convince Russia to rethink its support for Bashar Assad? I think the Russians have played now for some time the role of providing cover for Bashar al-Assad's behavior. Uh, the alternative uh, explanation that the Russians put forth is simply not plausible. Uh, not only is it not plausible, we know from our own information and open source information that their, uh, their alternative explanation is simply not uh, credible. So there's little question as to who was responsible for these attacks. It was Bashar al-Assad. Defense Secretary James Mattis issued his own strong warning today to Syria, saying its government would be ill-advised to use chemical weapons ever again. Oh, we have a discussion. I thought we, had Jen we don't have Jennifer. No, that we canceled that now. I thought we were going to have Jennifer Griffin. I'm sorry. That is my fault. That's like, too much television What's going one day. On with the That's what will happen. No, actually, that was my fault, not the producer's fault. For once. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Okay, so a lot of activity over the weekend, and then we had. Um, this today from Sean Spicer, the White House press secretary, when the press was trying to figure out what is the threshold for further action. Watch. I think the president uh, has been very clear that there are a number of lines that were crossed last week. Uh, he's not going to sit down. Uh, we, we saw that in the last administration. They, they drew these red lines, and then the red lines were run over. I don't think you're going to see the same play. I think what not just Syria, but the world saw last week as a president that is going to act decisively and proportionally and with justification when it comes to actions like that. I mean, and I will tell you, the answer is, is that if you gas a baby, if you put a barrel bomb in to innocent people, I think you, can enact, you, will, you will see a response from this president. That is unacceptable. Okay, so that line caused some kerfuffle uh, afterwards, Eric, because it was a question of Okay, well, barrel bombs are used every day. That's not use, using chemical weapons necessarily. So where is that line? A White House spokesperson on background just walked that back and saying that the, the use of chemical weapons was what was uh, the, the target because that was in America's national interest in order to stop those. What do you think? When I heard that and I was watching the press conference live, it's, I stopped and took a second look at it. And I was trying to figure out what was going on. I thought I heard that incorrectly. But I didn't. I think, and this is one of those cases where I think Sean Spicer just made a mistake. I think the, the press was wanting to find out, define where the red lines were. What Was it going to be along chemical weapons? Was it going to be hospitals and schools? Was it going to be barrel bombs? And I think Sean went to the lowest of all the denominators accidentally. And I, right. I think, and I think the White House came out quickly and said, hold on, hold on, not barrel bombs. That's not going to be our red line because, as we know, Literally thousands of barrel bombs have been used against citizens in Syria over the last, in fact, I think just last year alone. So thank God that's not the, the red line. I would hope that the red line would continue to be chemical weapons. And again, I would hope that it wouldn't go beyond that because I, I, this is getting a little scary, guys. For, and by the way, for all the, the political on the left, the politic people on the left, and also the anti-Trump people who said, oh, Trump's in bed with Putin in Russia. I mean, he bombed an airspace with Russians in the airspace. Yes, he gave them a heads up, um, uh, the air base. He, yes, he gave them a heads up. But this is against everything that they wanted, the Russians, and they've come back with very, very stern warnings. Don't do it again. So you can eliminate this Trump in bed with Putin type of thing. But I like what he did. He was, he was decisive and firm. I just hope it ends right there, no more. Not unreasonable, though, Greg, to ask the question of what is the line. Because the question, if you look at President Obama, and there's criticism for him, uh, for allowing the red line to be crossed, the line that he drew when it was crossed and he didn't do anything. I, so I can understand why people are asking, what is the actual red line? But it's a hard question to answer when President Trump has said, I'm not going to telegraph all of my moves. Yeah, well, there, it, there, there are two ways to explain the Syrian strike. There's the literal way, missiles hit a facility. And then there's a, its actual meaning, which is, this is exactly the perfunctory, bare minimum that we will exercise to maintain a persona of toughness 
without actually igniting an actual conflict. Because the fact is, Russia and America, it's not a blind date. We've known these people forever. They've known us forever. It's not like Rex Tillerson doesn't know these people. He ran an oil company, Exxon. Putin runs an oil company, Russia. So they <laughs> share the common ground, which is underground. This is something where you have an adult conversation when you go to Russia, if you still go to Russia, which I think they will, and you have a, you have a conversation like two members of a gang organization in which there's somebody in your gang that is making it worse for everybody else. So you sit down with Russia and you go, Assad is your problem, but he's becoming our problem. And our, we have to react in a moral way, which is what we do, in this perfunctory, bare minimum manner, which is what that, what that, that very specific strike was. So the answer is, is, is the Russians and the, and the Americans will meet and they will talk about certain things and then they will go on their merry way. Well, although it might not be all that merry, given uh, Kimberly, the other uh, entity here we haven't talked about and hasn't gotten much attention is that of Iran, mm -hmm. because they actually have an interest as well. So how do you think that fits into this? Well, they certainly do, and it just makes it more, you know, complex in terms of the level of interest and intentions in that geopolitical area. And when you think about it, you know, Iran and Russia, this war and maintaining this, uh, you know, presence in Syria and trying to help Assad is costing them millions of dollars every month. And there's one thing for sure that Russia cares about, and it's the Black Sea, it's access, it's naval, all of that. That is something that they are going to, for sure, that's their red line. So they have to find a way where they can still, Putin, in terms of elections coming up, you know, he needs to have, I think, a face-saving way to kind of exit somewhat some of that support out of that area because it is getting very tricky and McMaster said it very clearly rethink you know your support of this murderous regime blacking uh, back, um, backing this guy that is literally committing mass murder of his own people how to what extent and to what lengths are you going to come up against the United States that clearly with this administration is prepared to act what about Bob um, how you had over the weekend I think maybe too much is being made out of this, that Ambassador Haley said um, that regime change was necessary, mm -hmm. and Tillerson said, well, we had to do ISIS first, and then we can deal with Assad. But I think both of those things can be true, right? I mean, it's yeah, obviously both, a complex problem. Yeah, both can be problem. done at the same time. But let, let's keep a couple of things in mind. The Russians are not about to get out of Syria. They need Syria geopolitically. They need it. They need to have a buffer with Iran. You notice that the two people that came out, two countries that came out in support of Syria were Russia and Iran and the Syrian allies, whoever the rest of them are. I don't know who they did not mention them. Probably North but, Korea. Uh, but and I think the idea that Tillerson is going to go convince the Russians of anything is just uh, it's a fool's game. They, the Russians have a lot more at stake here, which is the expansion of Russia into the old parts of Russia that used to be the USSR. And I think he's, and they've seen Bashir as a perfect exactly ge geographically perfectly positioned to help them. So they're not going to, they could care less what the United States thinks. But Russia said, Eric, that their support, its support of Assad was not unconditional. And so this uh, AP report today that Fox cannot confirm that we were mentioning that uh, whether Russia knew about and then therefore I guess would be complicit in the chemical attacks. But if they said it's not unconditional, maybe that's an opening for Tillerson. I hope so. I, I, I think uh, so, so Russia is going to go into this saying, look, we're going to hold tough on this. Oh, don't forget, over the weekend, Russia decided to send some destroyers to the area, to the region, in case we did go ahead and drop another bomb or two on Syria for whatever reason. That other AP report that you cited, or it, it goes on to, I believe it was the same report. There was another report about the same time, maybe the same one, that said that the Russian um, Air Force actually bombed the hospital where some of the victims uh, were being treated just to cover up some of the chemical weaponry that was being used. I mean, here's the point, and this is what I've been saying for a long time. When you start peeling away this onion and there's more and more going on and there's more foreign policy and more people are willing maybe to, to, to heighten the rhetoric, you're, you're jumping into scary places. That's why Sean's Spicer's comment today about a barrel bomb had to be walked back very quickly, just very quickly, no, no. That's not where we're going because you're basically telling the world there's more coming because Syrians aren't going to stop. Assad's not going to stop bombing his own but people. But they should be but on a message question. for that. Here's the question, though. Is the Geneva Very Convention important. your red line? Because the Geneva Convention clearly states you can't bomb hospitals and you can't bomb schools, and that's been going on for and, a really long time. There's a number of treaties and conventions that say you're not supposed to use uh, chemical weapons as well. which they, Right, but they, if you they, keep chemical weapons as your 
okay, this is the one that's going to push us over the, the red line, mm -hmm. then you're kind of carving out a, a, an area where it's not really our fault that we're going to have to do this in, in, in re, uh, retribution of what you're doing. But if you start taking, you know, these lower levels of red lines that have been drawn internationally, mm -hmm. You're opening us to a lot. But I think that Mattis said that when Mattis said that they'll think about using chemical weapons again, that that really was the bottom line. Well, I think. That's why. They again, I think this issue sort of. I think it jumped the queue, so to speak, and that they're still trying to figure things out, and that you don't have to have an established doctrine on the 81st day of your presidency. That usually comes later, and so they're trying to figure it out. Greg, if I could, last question to you about um, the conflicting public signals. Mm -hmm. So, on the one hand, you had about 57 percent of Americans um, approving of the strikes and the strong stance that President Trump took, and yet you have on the. That's a strong disapproval for any additional further action and follow-up. People uh, appreciate things that already happened that turned out okay, but they're uncertain about things in the future That's that might point. turn out wrong. But I want to give some advice to Rex Tillerson uh, okay. before he goes to Russia. Before you get comfortable in that hotel room, mm. <laughs> check for cameras. Mm -hmm. In Russia, the TV watches you. Oh, well... Don't put, See, on, that's a then don't put on a good show. I didn't I know guess. that at all. Really? <laughs> all right, ahead. Uh, Tom didn't. 